What's up guys, Carolina Jackpot coming at you. It is Wednesday evening and it's raining in South Kakalaki. Hope everyone has a good Thanksgiving tomorrow. I hope you have a good Thanksgiving tomorrow. I hope you're off work. I hope you're off work. I am. Looking forward to that. It's been a long time uh, since that's happened, but I'm excited as hell. Don't know what I'm going to do yet other than eat one meal, but um, I'm sure I'll get into something. There's only a couple of college football games tomorrow, and uh, neither one of them are the ones that set the old excitement meter uh, at the next level, but you know, it's football, so it's what it is. Got some NFL air tomorrow to watch. So, hey, anyway, um, South Carolina coaching search. So it's been 11 days, 10, 11 days since Will Muschamp was cut loose. And, God, man, there has been so much talk about uh, head coaching candidates and – coaching search you know it's it's pretty tight lipped i guess right now which is good because you know these damn fans uh, which i don't want myself in there include myself i mean we don't really need to know all the ins and outs of what's going on with this uh, so it's been confirmed that shane beamer will be the first person to uh interview for the job friday i think it is starting to feel some sort of way about that i've already told y'all what I think about that uh, before, and uh, let me just reiterate it here in longer form on a video where I just talk about that. I do not want them to hire him for uh, our next football coach, but I have a very strong inkling and, uh, and very strong indications uh, from everything that I've seen that that's exactly what they're going to damn do. Um, you know, please fire off at me some reasons why uh, this guy would be an excellent choice uh, to replace Will Muschamp uh, as head football coach. Looking at his resume, I'm sorry, I don't see it. He's been an assistant for 20 years. 20 fucking years he's been an assistant. Never a coordinator. Never. Never. His own daddy at Virginia Tech, old Turkey Waddle Beamer, he wouldn't make him a coordinator. And hell, I don't know if his specialty is offense or defense because he's been, he's a defensive position coach uh, in the past. He has been at South Carolina anyway. Right now at Oklahoma, he coaches the tight ends and he's the damn assistant head coach. I think their guys are just all over the damn map. Okay, uh, at South Carolina, he was the recruiting coordinator, and during that time was when we uh, we brought in uh, Marcus Lattimore and Stephon Gilmore. Stephon Gilmore, Marcus Lattimore, Alshon Jeffrey came in during that time. Uh, Devontae Holloman, I mean, some guys from up there uh, in that Rock Hill area. Clowney came soon after that. You know, I mean, that was some of the uh, the better players that we've had on our roster at South Carolina, which were the ones that ended up being the catalyst for three 11 1 seasons in a row. First team in the state of South Carolina ever to do that. Don't, don't forget that. Three 11 1 seasons in a row, three top 10 finishes in a row. Well, he was the recruiting coordinator during that time. So now uh, all the Gamecock fans, uh, well, not all, but a lot over on Facebook and Twitter think that means that <laughs> that he recruited all these fuckers, okay? No, he didn't. That's the, the recruiting coordinator is somebody who just makes sure that this coach is in this place at the right time and make sure that this person is here and this and they may do a little bit of recruiting themselves I'm not gonna say he didn't take recruiting trips as well but there were a lot of coaches on that staff then and they were all doing some recruiting okay they all were because it's widely known that steve spurrier wasn't going out on a recruiting trail he didn't he didn't recruit okay his staff did it for him but it wasn't all them shane beamer Okay, it wasn't all Shane Beamer. And you know what? So some former players like him, right? Well, all right. It's great. They like him. You know, like at least 20 former Gamecock players talk about how much they like Shane Beamer. Well, you know what? I bet you could get 20 of them to talk about how much they like pussy. 
doesn't mean you should make it your next football coach. I bet you you could get 20 of them to talk about how they like chicken dumplings and chocolate cake. It don't mean you should make chicken dumplings and chocolate cake your next football coach. He's never been a coordinator. And in this day and age, you have to have a special team. And it, we have to have an offensive-minded guy. And I know he works under Lincoln Riley right now. I get all that. I get it. I really do. But, I mean, he's this dude, and he's 43 years old. Or 44, 43, 44, something like that. What is Lincoln Riley? Like 19? <laughs> I'm serious. No, he's not. He's like 34, 35. I mean, the, the, the roles are reversed. I mean, he should be the one that's the damn head coach, right? You would think so uh, with experience and age-wise and all that. But no, Stinkin' Lincoln is the one who's the coach here and, and giving him an endorsement. Okay, It just seems like he missed his calling. And I, and I, I, I know, I understand that he wants the job. He wants the job, Jackpot. He would, somebody, one of our Gamecock fans, you know what he told me? Over on Facebook, he said, Kale, and I'm not going to call his name out because of, uh, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't dare do that to somebody. He said, Kale, you mark my words. We, he's going to be the man. We're going to go 8-4 and four next year. We're going to go 8-4, and four, guys. You want 8-4. and four. You haven't had six players decommit from your 2021 recruiting class, which wasn't worth a shit anyway. But we're going to go eight and four. We're going to go eight and four. Four and eight. That might be a more realistic expectation. I've resigned myself to the fact that we're going to suck. We're going to suck for several years. Okay? Three, four win seasons may be the norm for three or four years. And then things will start getting built back uh, to at least getting bowl eligible, I feel like. And then that's where we can start building. That's where you can start reaching the ceiling. It's going to take a long time. It's going to take a long time. I'm 45 years old now. Uh, I don't think that the team will be, if all things go well, if they go well, I think the team may be in five years they may be in contention to move up to like third or fourth place in the SEC East, depending on what the other teams in it do. Depending on what the other teams in it do. Because you, you never know. You never know. F Florida's good right now, but they've been known to fall apart. Georgia's the one that's always been pretty consistent. Tennessee, uh, they're up and down. Um, Missouri's and Kentucky, they're up and down. Uh, Vanderbilt's always pretty much been a shithole, but there have been times when they have even made bowls with like six wins. So you got that to deal with. I just, I'm sorry. I just do not think this is the right person for the job. And look, this far into the search, I mean, why are there only like three candidates whose names are bandied about? Seriously, there's not been any kind of talk. And it may be because things are more tight-lipped right now with this search than they were with the boom search, okay? Well, the search that ultimately that ultimately produced boom, okay? Went through all that work. They hired a search firm. They went out. Uh, they scoured the country. Uh, they got turned down by Tom Herman right now. Uh, they got turned down by Kirby Smart because uh, Kirby Smart wanted the job. At, at, Kirby Smart wanted the job at South Carolina. He would have taken the job at South Carolina. Uh, UGA found out about that, and uh, they fired Mark Rigg. Had, had Kirby Smart come to South Carolina, do I think that uh, that things would have been a whole lot better? No, I don't. Uh, do I think that we'd probably be sitting here right now talking about uh, Kirby Smart's replacement instead of Will Muschamp's replacement? Maybe, maybe, uh, because these these defensive-minded coaches they're just not they're not forward thinkers. The only reason he succeeded at Georgia is because he was left with a damn bevy of talent and. Uh, Recruiting, <laughs> that's where it's at, recruiting. Well, they finish one, two, or three almost every damn year in recruiting at Georgia. Yeah, I mean, the brand sells itself. It does. The brand sells itself. Uh, you know, I. You know, you could have somebody like me who farts up wind half their life go to Georgia and 
be the head football coach and I could get you in, and I have no damn clue what I'm doing. I could get you in a top 10 class every year just because of the damn G, just because of that insignia, that brand. I could get you at that recruiting class. I'd probably do better though. Um, but no, never been a never been a, a coordinator, never. And I also get this: I get this fired back at me from some of the other Gamecock fans on, on Twitter and Facebook. Oh, but jackpot! Uh, look what Dabo Sweeney. He wasn't ever a coordinator. Look like what he's done. Huh, by now, but I, okay, that's true. Okay, I'll give you that. That is fucking true. You know what? People like Dabo are like one in 5,000. That's like a one in 5,000 story. Maybe the odds are even worse than that. Maybe one in 10,000. And I'm not sitting here sucking on Dabo's goober, so don't try to sit here and tell me that I'm a damn closet tater fan, because I'm not. But the fact of the matter is that the guy is pretty special. I mean, you don't see that happen every day. You just don't, okay? They caught lightning in a the bottle. They just happened to get the right guy at the right time who had the right frame of mind, and he's been able to parlay that into a very successful career because he hired the right coordinators, and they do the right things, and they work for him. They do what they're supposed to. Okay? That, that's not to say that Shane Beamer, because he's never been a coordinator anywhere, is going to turn into the next Dabo Sweeney. It's just not... Let, let's go back, look at the, like, the last 25 national championship games, okay? And, and two coaches. And some of those are BCS national championship games, and some of them were, were even before that, and then some of them are, are playoff national championship games. You take two coaches there. Other than Dabo, I guarantee you, you can't find two more coaches in any of that, anywhere, that's not that was never no damn coordinator at any point in their career. You, you just couldn't. You couldn't. Um, but th it just seems like a Gamecock thing to do. Um, you know, apparently, uh, you know, things they had been talking to Scott Satterfield at Louisville, who I thought would have made an excellent hire. Uh, but Scott Satterfield's already come out and said that he's not going anywhere, um, which is good. I mean, he had, he was making like 3.6 million at Louisville, which is, uh, kind of pricey to have to buy somebody out for. Uh, it's not like, you know, he, was just like drowning in money with his contract. Well, it would be drowning in money for me and you, but football coach terms, he wasn't. They could have afforded to buy it out. Um, but I don't know what the why the, the talks, like nobody's talking about Napier right now. I mean, some are. You know, he had coronavirus. I hope he's all right. Um, but he's been a coordinator. He's been successful everywhere he's been. He's worked under some successful head coaches. To me, it's a no-brainer that right now the people they're discussing that he would be the best candidate, okay? I haven't heard much Hugh Freeze talk late. I don't even know if Hugh Freeze is going to leave the Sunday school school that he's at right now. And, I mean, for what they're paying him, I mean, he might well not. He might as well not. He might well, well stay where he's at. Um, you know, th there was even talks that Tom Herman uh, could be an option looking to get out of Austin real quick before he uh, gets let go. Eh, I don't know about that. He turned us down one time before. I don't really want him either. I don't think he's the answer. But they need to beat up some of these other Power 5 schools and uh, some more uh, uh, group of five schools and find the right guy. But I, I still haven't heard any talks about Dave Clawson from Wake Forest. I don't think that's going to happen. Jeff Munkin from Army is somebody that uh, I've heard that the um, president of South Carolina, Caslin, who... Uh, was I, I don't know what he was at West Point. He was uh, in like a president's type role at West Point, but they don't call it uh, the president. He uh, was the one that brought Munkin on there at Army, and he turned that program around. Before Munkin came to Army, they had lost to Navy like 15 times in a fucking row and gotten their ass kicked most years. He turned them around. I mean, they've been going, they've been to bowl games. I mean, the. You know, for the last two years, they took o Oklahoma to the wire. They took Michigan to the wire in the big house. I mean, they, yeah, yeah, they run a damn triple option. Oh, well, we wouldn't be able to recruit any players down here. Oh, I'm turning in my Gamecock fan card if they hire him. Well, you know what? Go eat one if you would seriously do that shit. 
If they hired the coach from Army because he's a fucking winner and he knows how to win football games and he knows about discipline and he knows about fucking structure and he can bring a damn staff together, seriously, get the hell out of the damn fan base if you don't want that. Stupid. It doesn't matter. He's not going to be the coach anyway. But that's just the damn mentality. That's just a dumb ass mentality. You're not a freaking fan. You're not a damn fan of the program if you're going to act like some shit like that. I'm 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 turning into a Clemson fan if uh, they hire him. Now I'll tell you, I was pissed off and in my damn feelings when um, I heard all this talk about Shane Beamer getting so damn heated up. I'm like, man, I might have to find me somebody else to cheer for. I, I'm not going to find somebody else to cheer for. Okay, if they hire him, all right. Beamer ball round two then. Let's go get it. Hopefully he hires some damn good coordinators. Yeah, hopefully he hires a good staff and he can get some of these recruits back. But I, I don't see it. I, I, don't, I really don't think that that's the choice. I, the, the Coastal Carolina guy, I don't know enough about him to, to say whether or not he would be a good choice or not. But to me, they haven't gone after enough Power 5 coaches um, that already have jobs that are at lower level power five programs that South Carolina might be able to pick up. They have not gone after a group of five coaches other than these two, um, Napier and Chadwell. I, I just, I don't know. I don't understand that. But like I say, it may all be behind the scenes and not things that we're privy to. But I would be willing to, I would not be, say I'd put my next paycheck on it, but, um, you know, if the odds were right enough, I'd, I'd put $100 on Beamer being the next coach down there because that's just the Gamecock thing to do. Why would you spend the kind of money that you spent to buy out fucking Will Muschamp and then go hire a damn government cheese coach? A government cheese coach. <laughs> Taking the damn easy way out again. It sucks, and it pisses me off. But it is what it is. And like I say, if he becomes my coach, then he's my coach. And um, I'll support him. But I, I, I don't want to see it happen. I don't want it to come to that. Uh, anyway, guys, um, you know, a lot of a lot of unrest down there in Gamecock Nation the past week or so. You got uh, kids decommitting. We knew that was going to happen. I mean, I understand why. They, they don't they don't know who they're going to be playing for, okay? Okay, well, you're going to commit somewhere else, and you were committed here. Okay, that's fine. Uh, the recruiting class was terrible already. Now you've already lost a bunch of commitments. Um, hopefully, whoever the new coach is, whether it be Beamer, whether it be Napier, whether it be Jamie Chadwell, whether it be the daggum uh, guy from Alabama who likes to drink beer, uh, whether they hire Jeremy Pruitt as the head coach. I don't give a damn. Who, whoever it is will be able to get some of these kids to come back to South Carolina and, um, you know, find some other kids. Look, it's not as bad as you might think because you got the transfer portal, which in January, everybody's going to be able to enter the transfer portal one time, and it's not going to penalize you at all. These kids are going to be on that thing like stink on shit. They're going to be on it like stink on shit. So there will be players to be had. And there will be other kids who will come and decommit from other places and come to South Carolina. You have, I mean, these people, it, it's just like a damn, going to be like a damn Chinese fire drill for like a year. But the, the other kids getting another year of eligibility because of the COVID, that's huge too. Because you'll have a lot of them that'll stay. So that'll kind of squash some of these decommitments and not make it as bad as one might think. Now, let's be quite frank. It's not good. It's not good. But it's not the end of the world either. It's not the end of the world. Um, but you got former players uh, tweeting at current players and, and, and this, that, and other. And I made a video last Sunday where I talked about the J.C. Horn deal uh, where he um, opted out for the rest of the season after uh, Muschamp was fired, and you know, I supported his decision. Uh, I said that I didn't agree with it 100%, but I would support it. You know, it's not my choice to make. It's not something I would do, but obviously he was he felt led to do it. Um, but these other clowns, this Israel Makamogaku and all, you know, uh, you're just trying to damn uh, keep up with the Joneses, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, yeah, you, you know, you want my damn my real take on it? Yeah, you are fucking quitters. You are. 
you know, you want to sit here and you want to talk about the season and say, well, we what well, we didn't have, we ain't had nothing to play for. We ain't had nothing to play for. You know why you had nothing to play for? You know why you didn't have nothing to play for? Because you played like bitches through six games. You played like bitches. That was the softest, most taffy ass, vanilla, ice cream, pile of shit defense that I've ever seen in my life. Oh, but I'm going to be a draft pick. I'm going to be a draft pick. I don't know how hard they're going to grade that film from that old Miss game, but uh, I don't know what picks y'all going to be drafting in. I don't know what kind of picks y'all going to be drafting in, man. Y'all are something else. And then today, it's all been deleted off Twitter now, but you can find it somewhere. Uh, I found it on Facebook. And I thought it was quite humorous that, um, I don't know, Israel Makamawaku and uh, DJ Swearinger, uh, current New Orleans Saint, former Gamecock. Y'all know who DJ was. He played there from 2009-ish to 2012, I think. Um, that son of a bitch was a damn headhunter. Jungle boy, they called him. Hey, he used to knock the damn hell out of people from that damn position. He played in the damn defensive backfield. He was, uh, he was, he'd get some personal foul penalties, but he was a damn headhunter, boy. He would knock your dick in the dirt. And uh, I miss having some players like that. He could back it up, too. And, uh, and he kind of went off on uh, Mukwamu and, and told him that uh, he said, y'all soft. Y'all wouldn't last a quarter with us. Told him that. Just straight up clowned him on damn Twitter. Clowned his ass. So I thought that was funny. But it's not good, though. I mean, this is, this is not... Uh, you know, the, the type of brotherhood that you wish to see um, with, you know, your former players from your uh, team with recently former players and them like that arguing. It's just not, it's not fun. Um, it's not a good thing to see. You wouldn't see that at a lot of schools that have winning traditions. I can guarantee you that. But it's reality. You know, a lot of people are mad right now. A lot of people are angry. A lot of people are on edge. Um, and this football program needs to get it turned around in a hurry. I really do. Georgia's coming to town Saturday night. Um, you know, fuck Georgia. I, I can't stand them. Uh, you know, all they've been doing is running and bumping them damn gums uh, for a damn solid year, talking about how sorry and awful South Carolina is. You know what? All I can tell you, Georgia Bulldog fan, 2017, baby. Taste it. Yeah. It could happen again. It very well could happen again. You had a better and more talented team last year than you do this year. You had a way better and more talented team last year than you do this year. And, and uh, you know, there is no reason to think whatsoever that that couldn't happen again. Other than, well, it's probably not. But, <laughs> but it would be funny as hell if it did. It sure would. I mean, you damn, you damn deserve it. Because much as y'all damn run your damn mouths, that's all you do. Run your mouths and, uh, you know, and back it up with nothing. Because your team really wins nothing of substance. But anyway. All right, guys. I'm going to get off here and go uh, inside and uh, prepare my dinner. And then prepare for my podcast later on. I'll see y'all later. Peace. Go Gamecocks. Hire the right man. Woo!